All right, this will be week uh, lucky 13. Uh, your building looks should look something like this now. Um, all the outside windows, the window wall in the end, some of the doors in the corridor. Uh, I don't know if yours looks like this, but you can see my interior walls from the first floor showing up on the uh, on the third floor. So I'm going to do a little quick uh, exploration here and see what I can do to make that disappear. Go to level two. So I don't see him here, but I see a shadow of him. So I'm going to put a section through here just so I can see what I'm looking at and do some measurements. So we'll go right through this area. I'll get rid of this when I'm done. And I'll just double click it. So when I click, one of these interior walls you can see that it goes all the way up to the top and I know if I measure whoops where did it go there it is I'm just gonna measure this wall so it's I'm gonna cut that down one foot zero and three quarter inches so we'll go to our floor plan level and I'm just gonna select this wall and uh, so I could probably do it in 3D, but I'm going to select all of the walls that do not go above the ceiling area. And that would be this one. I think these two. And what we'll say is our these go up to level two and I want a top offset of negative one foot Where are the other one zero and three quarter inches oops got too many of those there we go and hit apply Hopefully I got them all. And that'll set that wall so it's just down underneath the ceiling then. So if I go back to my 3D view now, now I don't see those walls because they're not extending through the floor. So now what we're going to do now is start on page 5-14. We're going to do some part creation. And uh, what they want us to do is select our floor level on the second floor. So we'll just select this floor in the 3D view and then go to your um, Create Parts tool, which is right here, Create Parts. Get to wait a second. And then we're going to say Divide Parts. So we're going to take this floor and divide it up into multiple parts. I want to go to my level two plan. I'll zoom in on this stairwell and we're going to click the edit sketch tool. And we're going to select our rectangle and we're going to select a rectangle right here. We'll come over here and select another rectangle just these landing areas in the stairwells and then we're going to select both of our bathroom areas matter of fact let's go right through all of the bathroom that way they'll all be the same so once we've selected all of the bathrooms we'll just hit this green check mark and then switch back to our 3d view We'll unselect this for a second. Oops, thought I hit the check mark. There we go. Now if we pull this around, I'm going to pull this up so I can see it better. And I'm going to turn off my shadows so I just see the wall. And what we're going to do is we're going to select in the properties panels, we're going to select 
under parts visibility yours may show something else but make sure it says show parts select the stairwell landing this one and then we'll select oops this one select both of them actually we're going to do two different ones so I'm going to just select this one on the left first if we go by the book and we're going to go over to our properties panel and look under We should have something here called materials somewhere. Material by origin. Uncheck material by origin. So we want to uncheck this. Now we're going to select this location tool or this material tool. Being a little slow with me. So what we want to do is actually create a different floor surface on here by splitting this up. Let's be loading up all the parts and pieces. There we go. And what we want here is VCT. So we'll type in laminate. Whoops. Learn to type laminate we want ivory mat and we'll just say okay you'll notice this changes then we'll select this one this stairwell again we'll go down to uncheck material by origin this time we're going to call this one um, and that's tile we're going to use concrete cast in place Type in concrete, cast in place, hit OK. And then we'll select our bathroom floor, kind of jumping back and forth. And this one's going to be a tile mosaic gray. So again, we'll uncheck material by origin. We'll come over here and tile mosaic gray happens to be right there. We'll say OK, left click. And now those are all set. And the different materials are now shown. If I actually render this as a realistic view, see if they show up. So you can see now we've got concrete, we've got gray mosaic tile, we've got a regular tile out here, and then in this restroom we've got a different type of uh, ivory laminate flooring on our stair treads. Okay. So we're going to we'll skip over the next part of this and uh, we're going to move to putting a railing. We're going to move to exercise 5-7 which is putting a railing in our stairwell. So let me unrender this, go back to hidden line and we're going to start on by just going to level 2 and we're going to go to this stairwell over here. Now you can see that um, the floor doesn't look the way it did before. So I'm going to actually move back onto the 5 6 just so we do see that. And we're going to, uh, under the, uh, we're going to set our visibility to coarse with hidden lines. And uh, we're going to scroll down on this box until we see view range. We're going to hit edit. We're going to set this to seven foot six. Your cut plane is going to be at four feet. Your bottom offset is going to be at zero. And we're going to put our view depth at negative one. And we're going to say apply and then hit OK. And again, in the uh, 
here in this one we have to go to our parts I don't know whether parts visibility we want to change that to show parts and hit apply and now our floor shows up the way we had set it before in this particular view so it's easier to work in this this railing so the next thing we're going to do is 5-7 is put the railing in so we're going into level 2 which we're already at we're going to go to our architecture panel and select railing we want to use the sketch path method and we're going to select the line tool We'll just zoom here. I'm going to start right about this location and just draw a line down until it intersects kind of with the edge of that railing. We're going to say edit type. Once we've drawn it out, we're going to say duplicate. And we're going to call this one guardrail landing. We'll hit OK. And we're going to hit the edit button for our rail structure. And we're going to say insert. And we'll insert two rails. The first rail up here is going to be, we're going to call it middle rail. Line two is going to be bottom rail. The height for the middle rail is going to be one foot six inches. no offset and we're going to use a circular handrail one inch in diameter we're going to do the same thing for the bottom rail circular one inch in diameter and our material on this is going to be aluminum so if we just type a l u there's aluminum metal guess that yep metal aluminum Hit OK, and the same for this will be metal aluminum, and we'll say apply and OK. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select edit on the baluster placement, which is right here, baluster placement, edit. Uh, we want our balusters to be one inch round, not square, so one inch round. Um, the start post is going to be one inch round. So all three of these are going to be one inch round. In the distance from previous column, which is distance from previous column, set it to four inches. And mine's already set to that, so that should be fine. We're going to hit the OK button. And up here on the uh, top rail height, it's already three feet, and the structure. already did that one oh this one height top rail instead of rectangular two by two we want this to be circular one and a half inches and then hit OK now we're gonna hit our check mark there's our railing so we actually go look at this in 3D now. We can see our top railing on our baluster. We'll render it in realistic so you can see it. There's our aluminum railing comes up to our head rail. So that's going to keep somebody from falling off the top of our staircase. Now we should be able to go back to level 2 and copy this same thing by just copy. And I'll use 
we'll use this line right here as our copy location and we'll bring it down and we'll place it right here and make sure if I left click and it doesn't disappear we know it stays at the same height so when we click on that we know it's at zero it didn't go down to the first floor so we'll again double check it we'll just look in here make sure that's on our railing down here we've got the same railing now posted on the other stairwell so it takes care of our our stairwells on this level the next thing we're going to do is show you how to create ceilings so again we're going to do this we'll put our ceiling in level one so we'll go to floor plan level one and we're going to put a ceiling right in this area in the uh, first thing we want to do is they want us to type VV Victor Victor and we're going to turn off grids and oops under annotation categories I always forget that grids we want to turn off elevations and we're going to turn off sections don't think we have any but I'll turn them off anyway sections hit apply and OK I did have one and make sure this is the one time we want to be in our ceiling level I was in the wrong level so now I gotta probably do the same thing again I'm gonna get rid of that section before I have to turn it off yes and now VV the time when you want to be in the ceiling plan it's when you forgot to elevations grids and sections there we go so now our floor plan looks like this you shouldn't the book shows doors you shouldn't see any doors on a ceiling plan we're going to select the architectural portion up here which I'm already in and we're going to go to our ceiling level and what we're going to put in here is a ceiling that is two by four ACT system if you don't see this you should be able to hit the drop down and see what it has in there for basic systems so we'll use that one and all we need to do is we'll do it with a um, we can do it with the automatic ceiling so I'll just left click and you see this red line kind of show up around the room if I just left click here and I'll actually place that 2x4 grid ceiling in place and now what we'll do is add some light fixtures in here so we'll zoom into it we'll go to our systems pick lighting fixtures yes we want to load them up and we'll go down here to our US Imperial lighting architectural internal lights and we want a um, 2 by 4 lamp so this is going to be a ceiling light linear fixture hit open so this has multiple sizes what we want is a 2 by 4 2 lamp fixture 120 volt now if I bring this over to my ceiling and I'm just going to place these kind of awkwardly on here so I have some room to use my align tool on them so we're going to have four light fixtures on here hit escape a couple times and now go back to our modify and align so I want to align this grid of the ceiling to this line and then this to this line so that puts our grid our light right in the grid pattern just easier than trying to just kind of eyeball it into place to lay them in there and then let the computer line them up to the right location based on the relationship so now we have four lights inside this this area that will actually show light when we render it um, to show you how that works if I go to my uh, let's do a camera view from my level one so you don't see the ceiling but if I actually just take my view 3d view and camera and I'll just look through the doorway here 
to the outside. You can see in this that I'm standing inside the building. It's a little high, but now if I render this and I use this tool and I say, okay, I want to render this, but I only want to render and I'll render it in kind of a medium. And I just want to use my interior artificial lights, which is my regular light fixtures. And I hit the render tool. Hopefully this doesn't take too long because the more lights you have, the more, um, the longer it takes to render. Uh, but this little area shouldn't take too long. And what you should see is the glow of those lights showing up on the floor. And you'll probably see a reflection of the lights in the floor if they're waxed. You know, if they're shiny tile floors, which that material should be. So when this uh, rendering process reaches about 50%, you'll start to see the lights show up. going a little slow on me, but that's okay. It's a learning experience. So you can see it's got four artificial lights, no daylight portals. Dum de dum dum. So it's going out and taking a square by square and figuring out what the light application will be in this particular area. So we probably won't spend too much time adding too many lights to this building just because some of you, myself included, you know, may not have the power in the computer to, to compute all this stuff. So we need to be a little careful, not get too carried away. Otherwise, we'll be waiting up all nights for things to render. So you can see the box gets smaller and smaller. And each time it gets smaller, it's more fine tuning how the light reflects and refracts and illuminates different parts of whatever we're looking at. Thirty nine percent. So ten more percent. We'll start seeing some of the rendering take place here. There it goes even to smaller. And right about now you should see it start rendering. There it is. So some of the stuff inside the building is still dark because we don't have any lights in there. But we, what we do have are lights out inside the doorway in the vestibule. So we can see how those four 2x4 fluorescent lights are actually illuminating that interior work. So this, if we take out the sun, then it's more or less like, like a nighttime shot. If it gets halfway through, I'll stop it. But uh, I want to be able to see what the, if we can see some of the floor and see if we can see the reflection of the lights on the floor itself. Just another minute, and I'll let it go. So what we're going to do next is there's a challenge exercise at the end uh, to add ceilings to level 1 and 2. And we're going to do these ceilings as uh, gypsum ceilings, not 2 by 4 So they're just going to be sheetrock ceilings. And we're going to put a stucco finish on the outside of them. So that's our next uh, application. So I'm not going to hold you up on this video. We'll show you some other stuff later, but uh, we'll stop this one now. Cancel this out. Yes. When I close this, it just goes back to our original 
function so it's running a little slow tonight this saved this view down here I don't want to keep it so I'm just going to delete it brings us back to our um, level two or actually level one is where I want to be so now we're going to put our ceiling in the rest of the building so I'm going to go to uh, level one ceiling plan so there's our other ceiling and we're going to go to our architecture ceiling and we're going to drop this down and select our gypsum wall bud board on metal stud and we're going to say edit type let's duplicate it and we're going to say stucco on gypsum wall board on metal stud we'll edit this and we're going to add another finish we're going to insert one right there and this will be finish one and this will be put them on there backwards but this one will be gypsum wall board I'll say okay that's five eighths of an inch and this one is actually going to be stucco I don't know if we have a stucco doesn't look like it so let's let's create a stucco finish so we're going to take let's take our gypsum we'll use that as a template we'll right click on this and say duplicate and we're going to call it stucco and we're going to give it an appearance of uh, and we'll leave that the way it is we'll go to our appearance here and you can see this has a JPEG image that's painted stucco it's just a digital image so if we click on this we're going to go find something else and see if we have anything in here called stucco wall coverings fabrics I don't see anything. We got stone, woods. Let's just type in whether I can search from here. Oh, there it is plaster stucco, mauve bump. What we want is the stucco fine. Let's go with this. Should be one here. Stucco fine white. That looks good. So let's go with that one. So you can see it's got this image of stucco now that it's going to get put on there. It's going to give it a little bit of a finish. And we could add uh, a, a, a bump map to that. We've got one selected. So what we want instead of gypsum is we want the stucco. Plaster stucco. And we want fine white bump. That's the one we want is the bump. And this one is. I want to make sure I get the right one. Looks like it. We'll say apply. Hit OK. Make sure I get stucco. So now it says stucco on the bottom. And this is only going to be an eighth of an inch thick if you can follow that so you try to go out and find an image that's in your mapping you can actually create your own but this happens to be in our library anyway we'll say okay if we actually look at a preview now we can see that we've got our our framing on our ceiling our gypsum and then we've got an eighth inch coating of stucco on the underside of that so we're just going to say okay that looks good and We'll place that ceiling using the automatic sketching tool. So I'm going to place a stucco ceiling here. The ceiling height is going to be eight feet. Let's make it uh, let's make it a nine foot ceiling. 
just because I've got that much clearance in there. Uh, is that taller than my walls? Maybe. Let's go 8 feet and see if it... Yeah. Alright, we'll keep it at 8 feet. So we're going to click inside each of these walls. Here, 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 in the stairwell. Uh, we'll go in this shaft, we'll go in the bathrooms, in this one, in this stairwell. Oops, that one I already did. It's going to let you know if you hit it twice. And uh, I think that's it. Yep, hit that one too. So now if you actually look at your 3D view on the second floor. Oops, that's the first floor. So we can see, well we can't see it there. We'll have to do this. You can see it right here, I think. There's our ceiling down here in white underneath our floor framing for the second floor. So now we'll go to our second level ceiling plan. Again, go to the ceiling. Save the project. Oh, yeah. Same thing. Gypsum wallboard on stucco. So we're going to do our whole second floor. We'll do our um, stairwell tower. Um, we'll do these two elevator shafts. This room, this room, this room, and this room. I'm going to go back down to my level one ceiling plan, hit escape, and if I select, what if I can select the ceiling? I'll go to 3D and see if I can, I can't do that either. So I probably, I shouldn't have put a ceiling on the first floor. So, how do I fix that? Let's take a look. Let's do a section through here. And I'm going to turn this to wireframe so I can see where that ceiling is. I think I'll do it on the west end. Nope, oh, east end. East end's got my glass wall. Wireframe. Uh, that should be my. Uh, try and see if I can select it, but it doesn't doesn't want to let me. So what we'll do is I'm going to do a duplicate view of this. We're going to right click and we're going to say um, under properties. section box on, select it, and we'll bring this down, come on, there we go. There we are. I'm going to select this ceiling here and delete it. We don't want this ceiling. I'm going to delete that one. Everything else is good. I didn't put one in the elevator shaft, so those are the only two spaces I made the mistake of. Uh, so now I can just take this and delete it. We'll go back to our level one ceiling plan. And now if I actually were to render this shaded, I can see down into my stairwells and my elevator shaft. So my mistake, no biggie. Figured a way to fix it. All right. So now, we're, again, we're probably going to put a lot of light fixtures on here. But I've actually put uh, some light fixtures in the corridor. Um, Let's go ahead and turn our, our grid lines back on. So I'm just going to hit VV. Whoops, VV. If 
go to annotation, we'll go down and turn that grid line back on so we can see some locations. And I want to put a line of lights right in the center. So we go to system, light fixtures. We can use the same one. This will just mean that they're going to be um, supported off the ceiling. So I'll put one here, hit escape. I'm going to select that and we'll do an array of lights. And we're going to put, uh, let's say, 16 lights in this corridor. And we're going to space them um, 60 feet. Uh, yeah, let's see, what's that measure? From here, we'll space them 125 feet apart. So we'll select the light. We want 16 lights. Last, I'm going to select this here, and I'm going to go 125 feet. And there's 16 lights in a row, all spaced evenly. So if we were to take a look at this from the first floor level, and I want to take a look down my corridor now, take my view tool, 3D camera, and I'll just be standing here looking in this direction. There's all my light fixtures on the ceiling down that corridor. Okay. Let's do it really quick. See if I can render this quicker by just doing it as a draft. And then we're going to do this with just interior lights only. Should be a little quicker if I just do draft. Because you don't really see lights when you're doing realistic. The only way to do it is when you're actually rendering it with the lights in place. And the higher the resolution, the longer it takes. I've had a couple that I've done this past week that took uh, took well over an hour to render the image that I wanted. And I, I may try to bring those in to you at, uh, at the live lab and show you what some of the stuff I've been working on. Usually once it gets all the levels or the lighting figured out, it goes a little faster. So now you can see it start to render a lot quicker in the draft mode. But you're not going to get the resolution that you would with, uh, um, with the higher resolution. But you can see now that we can see the reflection of these lights in the, in the flooring. Um, our walls are pretty bare. And... Um, I think uh, what we're going to do in the live lab, lab this week is I'm going to show you how to uh, put uh, wood base and cornice molding and chair rails on our walls so that they, uh, they, they look a little bit more realistic. So we can see our stucco ceiling up here, our tile floor, um, and the reflection of those lights. So we'll close that out and get rid of this view. And we're back on our ceiling. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to um, move to chapter 7 and we're going to put a roof on this building. This is going to be a hip roof with a flat top on it. So it's going to be sloped on the sides but then we're going to put a flat top on it. So starting in that um, chapter we're going to our roof line plan under our floor plans. So just go to roof line we see that our our um, our wall doesn't show up really well here. So, um, in order to select this, we need to be able to uh, identify where that roof is. So I'm going down to my view range, and I'm going to edit this. This isn't in the book. I'm going to change this seven foot six, four feet, and I'm going to put negative one foot here. And we're going to put negative 
one foot here and hit apply and now you notice my walls highlighted so I can see them and I can click I could see them before but they were faded so now I can select them so we're going to select one of these walls and then we're going to right click and and say select all instances in entire project so it's going to select all of my outside walls and display them now down here in the bottom we have a little thing that looks like a pair of sunglasses we're going to isolate that so we're going to say isolate element so the only thing left now is just my outside walls that I can see this is on page 7-2 we're going now to our roof under the architecture section we're going to look at roof we're going to drop it down and it's going to be roof by footprint we're going to define the slope and uh, our overhang is going to be six inches we want to extend to the wall core Now we're going to um, it says on the options bar I'm not sure where that is to define extend to core line eaves I don't see an options bar here. Everything else looks maybe we got to select them first. So I'm going to select this first wall. Select them all the way around. There's my slope. Oops, we want these on the outside. There we go. Click kind of towards the outside and just select all of your visible walls on the outside. So you get this pink line on the outside of the wall. If your mouse is on that side, that's the side it will generally find. You can see we're setting right now at a 912 pitch, um, which should be fine. We're going to leave it at 912. That's what the book has. We're going to sketch a line now to connect these two endpoints together. That's also 912. And on our properties, we're going to select a wood rafter 8 inches with asphalt shingles. It does say insulated. Yep. And now if everything's connected here, we should be able to just select our green check mark. It says, would you like the attached highlighted walls? We'll say yes. Would you like, I think that's all we need to do. Just left click on the outside. And uh, of course, our viewing height isn't that high, but if we look at this in a 3D view now, what we'll be able to do is see that roof pitch all the way to the top. So it's got a pretty high roof pitch on it right now. Now we're going to go fix that. We're going to do something. We're going to modify this roof. roof. We left click, go back to our um, roof line plan and hit our sunglasses again. And we'll say reset temporary. We'll go ahead and do that. So the next exercise, 7 2, is we're going to go to our east elevation and we're going to add a new level here. It's going to be 10 foot 6 inches higher than this one.
10 foot 6 inches. And we're going to run that down to this end. Hit escape. And we're going to rename this one. Roof cutoff. Yes. Okay. We're going to select the roof so it's highlighted, just like that. And on the properties level, we're going to set the cutoff level right here to roof cutoff. And we'll say OK. And what that does then is it lops that roof off right at that level. So again, if we look at it in 3D, we can see now that we've got this cutoff roof section. And we're going to fill that in now with a flat roof on the top portion of the building. So we're going to go back to our roof cutoff view, which is right here. And we are going to select roof by footprint. We're going to use the pick lines this time no slope, no overhang, just zero. And we're going to pick an edge. So we want this tool. I think I need to Actually, we'll just use our line tool on this one just because it's easier to just trace it on the inside. Plus, this is not visible. I could mess with the view depth, but it's just as easy to just come in here and just trace this line around the edge. For some reason, this doesn't seem to be. I think you have to kind of double click on this to get the lines to. It wants to show up as pink all the way around. Oh, I didn't check off chain, that's why. So I think I got them all now. Whoops, going to miss this one. That looks like I got them. We'll hit the check mark, and there's our roof on the top. So now if we look at our 3D view, we can see that this is flat on the top. And that's actually going to be a gravel and tar roof. So if we actually select this edge of the roof, we're going to change that now to Edit Type. Oops, I'm going to cancel that. We want this to be 9 inch generic. Now we'll hit Edit Type. We're going to do a duplicate. And we're going to call it tar and gravel. Say OK. We'll hit our edit screen right here. And we're going to add, we're going to insert four levels. I'm going to move the core boundary down. So this top level here is going to be finish number one. Four, and uh, that's going to be gravel. So if I select this, I'm looking for gravel. If I type in grav, nothing's there. So we will use something else. Let's look at stone. Uh, about finish. Try and look for something I can put in there. A 
Well, let's see. Um, type grass. No. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom, look under this list, and uh, see if we have anything under site work. Gravel. Right there. Double click it. So now we've got this gravel material that's on here. So it was under Autodesk site work when I click this window. We'll say apply and OK. Why it says stucco. Cancel that out. I put the gravel on my stucco. So we'll go back up here just to fix that before I mess it up too much. Oh, there it was. can extend this over a little bit so I could see it better. Stucco white, that's what I wanted. All right. So I'm going to take that stucco and I'm going to say duplicate. Well, now we're going to call it gravel. And we'll go find some gravel. Oops. That's granite. Site work paving grass. We'll go back over here to Autodesk. Find it under the site work. Make sure it's still gravel. We'll say apply and OK. So now that's gravel. Structure number one here is actually going to be a membrane layer. So I'm going to change this to membrane layer. Number four is substrate two. And there. And number five is going to be structure one. Structure one is actually going to be wood joist rafters. Rafter layer, wood joist rafter layer. Hit OK. The material on substrate one is going to be EPDM membrane. Membrane. OK, and so is this one, EPDM membrane. The gravel thickness is going to be 1 quarter inch, not very much. And the roofing membrane, 0. This one is going to be 5 eighths of an inch. Structure 1 is going to be 7 and a half inches. For our framing. Everything else looks good. 
We'll say OK. Now on the uh, patterning here, we drop this down. Let's see if we got anything for gravel. Say new. Type in gravel. I wonder if I can go get one. So we're going to say custom import. I'm going to go to my CIE 101 home, families. I did grab a gravel pattern, and I'll put this online on Blackboard for us so we have it. That looks good. We're going to set our scale on that to 0.03. So that looks like gravel. Hit OK, and hit OK here. And then we're just going to say OK. So if we zoom in on this now, we'll see gravel shows up on the building, even in this mode. We'll put our shadows on. We'll flip this around. So this is what we will be doing in Monday's lab, is ceilings, light fixtures, and the roof. And again, I'm not going to put a lot of light fixtures in here yet, just because um, I don't want to, to wear out your computers too much. But uh, I think we got a pretty good start here on getting things in place. Um, and then uh, I think in our lab, we'll actually be doing a little bit more finish work on the interior. And I want to extend, if you notice, one issue here is our floor is set away from the outside wall. So we're going to fix that in lab also. And I'll have a video on that for actually this is what we're doing in lab I'll have the video on fixing the floor and then we'll start doing some interior um, uh, placement of uh, furniture and some walls just so we can have something that we can output for a visual uh, to get us going and then uh, the week after we may start on doing some site work uh, getting our trees parking lot some stuff out outside the building that we can work with if we actually look at our North elevation now as a hidden line file. There's our north elevation. And again, we can see that we're going to need to unpin this and bring our grid lines up a little further. These look to be okay, although I should. That was not pinned anyway, so I should be able to just pull these out just a little bit. So our text doesn't overlay. So that looks pretty good. And uh, give it a quick realistic rendering. Yep. So we'll be able to start putting out some of these elevations with dimensions on them uh, and some notes uh, in a future. Um, I don't know why that cut off up here. Oh, that's because of the thickness of the roof on the flat portion. Okay, so that should uh, take care of us for the first part of the week, and I'll have a video for the second part. So, thank you much.